I'm but anyway, Riley, Riley like Masters of the time. Universe. Yeah. Go. So here, here's the story, Roxy. Here's what happened. So for those of you, if you if you listen to the Schmoes No Show back in the day, this might be a, sh- a story that you've heard, but now there's a different, uh, it, it continues on. So forgive me as I tell the story again, but this is kind of how it all went down. I worked for Joel Silver for about three years. Uh, while I was there, I would read a bunch of scripts. Some of these scripts would be in turnaround, which means that essentially what Riley was just talking about means that the studio no longer has the rights for it. It's in turnaround, and then another studio can pick it up should they want to. Mm-hmm. Masters of the Universe was a script that was going – it was in turnaround. They were looking to get it picked up somewhere else. John Woo was involved at the time, had written the script. It was atrocious. The worst. I mean, you read it? Uh, yes, and I read the script. It he was sent really, it to me. He goes, read the shit. Yeah, and, uh, and so Tila, at one point, one of the characters in, in Masters of the Universe was, John Woo. Uh, was asking, yeah, John Woo. John was asking to eat hamburgers and cheeseburgers. It was, it was, it was an atrocious He-Man thing. asking, like, are you high? It, it, was, it was terrible. But yeah. so, and this was, and it was an, uh, it was an well, uphill. Was he? No, it was an uphill battle for me because what I was trying to do is I was saying, look, this is in turnaround. And then so Susan Downey, who Robert Downey Jr.'s wife, was running the company. She and she had trusted me because I had found uh, the Wonder Woman writers. I was in good standing over there. I just I was I was on my way up to, to doing more. And so she she said, "Is this a good script?" I said, "No, it is not." And she's like, "Well, why do you, why do we want it then?" And I said, like, "Because of what it could be. It could be Star Wars meets Lord of the Rings yes. if taken seriously." Yes. And she's like, "Those are two good franchises, but we just don't have anything to base it on. So you know, it's nothing I can do with it right now." Understood. So then I'm trying to figure out, well, what can we do? Because, and then I started talking to friends and like, well, because if you can get a financier on board, someone like a Village Roadshow or Legendary Films, someone like that who says, we understand it, we'll come on board to to put the money on, then we can then say, here's the take we want to go with. Let's go ahead and move this thing. Then the studios or the production companies will really want to get involved. So you had to write a spec script so that they would understand. Or a treatment, right? Yeah. So... Enter Riley. So Riley and I have been working on some stuff. I said, "Here's the idea and the things that I wanted to kind of go." And then he said, "Well, and what you if were an f- original fan." I was a huge fan yeah. because I was yeah. a fan Insanely of the comics. Me, yeah. See, that was the thing. Is he, I was he knew I was a fan of the comics. The comics were based off of basically Conan the Barbarian, right? Right. And so then the '80s TV show came out, which I loved, but it was a very cheesy thing. And that's what everyone pops in everyone's head when they think of the '80s series. They don't think about the 2002 series that came out in Cartoon Network, which was more serious, went into the lore and showed what this thing could be. So we watched all of those. We watched everything. Um, we read the comics and we said, this is what we think we should do. Riley said, this is what I think we should do. I said, here are the story notes. Riley wrote this treatment. I said, this is this is, this is is what we have. This is epic. This is Star Wars meets Lord of the Rings. Now I can do something with this. Well, to this day, one of my favorite openings of any movie ever for so, that Masters and of the Universe. And, and hold it because, you know, it's the same. Th- so we go to then my buddy Fred Klein was still working at Village Roadshow at the time. So I call him up and I go, I got something here. Like, I believe that we can really get this across. We can get it to the studio, but I need to get either Village or someone else on board. And he's like, let me read it. He's I love this. And at the time, Dana Goldberg was running it. And he's like, I don't know if this is going to be up Dana's alley. So why don't you see what you can do with it somewhere else and you know, then come back if it's not working out. So I said, cool. So I met with this guy, Neil, over at Legendary. right? So I sit down with Neil. And it's me, my buddy Adam Winkleman. And we have Riley, my, Riley and my treatment. We sit down. And we're going over it, and then this guy's like, I love this. Legendary can work with this. I'm like, great. So we start working on it. We're moving on it. And Neil's like, okay, here's maybe you do this. Oh, you you worked on that? Great. Two or three weeks we'll work on this together. Out of nowhere, one day he goes, oh, you know what I realized? We're working on Conan the Barbarian. It's too simple. We can't do it. Just cuts it off just like that. I'm like, all right, well, whatever. So then – my buddy Naveed, who was an executive over at Silver Pictures, goes, this is after now. I had just set up these guys, the guys who replaced Joss Whedon on, on uh, Wonder Woman. Okay. Right? So these guys had written this script. So I was like, what if we have Jenison and Strickland take a thing off of Riley's treatment, write their own, write their own version of it, because they had a whole different pitch completely, and have them start working, because they're hot right now. Mm-hmm. Start working with them, building up the, the script. We get a phone call from Justin Mark's agent. Justin Marks, very talented screenwriter, writing the new Jungle Book, or wrote the wrote the Jungle Book. Um, he's he, he, he there's tons of things that you look at look him up, and he was on Voltron. I mean, he's he's a brilliant writer, very good dude. I love him to death. Um, we get a call from his agent, and he goes, "Hey, would you guys be interested in doing a Masters of the Universe movie?" Justin Marks has this treatment that was brought to him by Neil over at Legendary, yeah. the guy that I had what? met with. Yeah. Um, so I went. Excuse me? Not Justin Mark's fault. Justin Mark said, Justin Mark's yeah, yeah. completely innocent and in all this. He's getting, getting a job. 
Justin was just doing his thing. Justin yeah. and, and Justin took, to be fair, Justin took a lot of the stuff that uh, he gave him, made it his own, and then just came up with a brilliant thing on his own of what what it should be. But it was this guy who did what I never Neil. thought could happen. Neil stole this thing. I got up and started running towards the door to run down a legendary because on the same thing. And m my buddy Navid's like, "Stop, we'll figure it out." The guy came in, apologized. He, he admitted it to our face that he ripped us off, all this stuff too. And he's not even working anymore. But like the whole point is. It then came into Joel Silver's company. We they got it. They took it to the studio, and Joel and Justin Marks and everybody work on it. Mattel then got involved, and it was this big thing. They were going to do it. I was going to do this creative exec, be a creative executive on it. It just got really sloppy. I I left because I didn't like the way it was all going down. What year is this? Two thousand and seven, around there. So it, it was working. They were trying to get it, and the, the studio executives were working on it. And it just Mattel and Warner Brothers. They couldn't see eye to eye on how to make this thing work. Split up. Sony enters now. This is way detached, and all this stuff happens. Jeff Lodlow's supposed to be involved. Michael, not Michael Bay. Uh, McGee's supposed to be involved. Like, they don't, nobody's got it right yet. If Mattel can get this studio going, and Mattel can find the right people to do Lord of the Rings meets Star Wars, that is what you need to do. You got to stay. Don't make Guardians of the Galaxy. Don't make Thor Ragnarok. That's not what this movie is. It's not what it is, and I think that that's what they't going to do. Couldn't and the I think same thing be said about Flash Gordon to a sense or yeah, well, Flash Absolutely. Gordon's different because Flash Gordon comes with an air of camp, right okay. it, it, it does. But and you yeah. can take that material and do it a little serious you, could. And you can you can make and that's what we were doing with the okay. Masters of the Universe, which we did put it up on Schmoes. No, you can still read that treatment, treatment yeah. there. So maybe you want to tag Mattel. And tell them this is the way to do yeah, it. Yeah, well, but they, I mean, we, they had read it a couple times before too. They had had it. I remember Trevor. Trevor was managing me at, yeah. at, at that point, and they said Mattel passed on they, that take. Yeah, they they, they had read that they had read that take, and um, and the, there was this stuff with the lore that we kind of expanded off of. Yeah, that they we wanted. We created our they, own. Lore. Yeah, they wanted to go back. Would to you guys still want to be involved with the project if you? Were if they did offered? it that way, yes, totally. Yeah, I, I mean, I I, I want to write the hell out with of that our, thing. With, with that with the vision of what it could be, and you can even take a rendition of what the '80s theme song was and get like a you know a Giacchino or a, or a, um, a Henry Jackman type spin or or, or, or Brian yeah. Tyler, and you can make that. You can do what they did for what Jablonski did for the Transformers theme, and you could really you could really make something special with that movie. I'm just I'm worried. It's been through so much. I don't think anyone understands it. I think that a lot of people see that '80s thing, yeah, the cartoon, and that's like because like, that's the first thing I got. It was like, how are you going to do with a guy with a tiger and a Dutch boy haircut? I'm like, that's not what the that's not no. what this property. I, and, and I think they I think they're they're handcuffed with those toys, and they and they go, well, this is kids, and this. so yeah. make make it this, make it that, and they don't get it. I, I think it, you. The mythology is all there. Yeah. And the reintroducing of the toys could be a boon for them, Huge. too. Yeah, you yeah. could do them so differently. So anyway, so Masters of the Universe is out there. You guys think, how do you think it should be made? I do want to take a couple phone calls from the audience.